On today's episode, I'll show you how I made this. It's a filament sensor to tell you when you've run out of filament. When you do, you get a warning. I'll show you how I made it on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. Did you know that many Patreon supporters give more than a dollar a month to help support it for kids and those who can't afford it? If you can't afford a dollar a month, please consider supporting Filament Friday. I found this filament sensor design by user Bookmake on Thingiverse. It used a simple roller switch, so I figured I'd give it a try. I downloaded the .stl files and it's two files, one for the box and one for the cover. And they came in upside down, so I just used the uh, change rotation and the X direction made it 180 for both of them and then centered in a range so now they're centered to the build platform. There's other ways to do this in Simplify 3D I know but it was just as easy as anything. And then uh, I was ready to put it on my Flash Force Dreamer using PLA which is a left extruder. I chose 30% fill. My extruder is a 0.4 nozzle. Layer height 0.2, three top and bottom layers, three outer perimeter shells. No raft, no skirt, infill, like I said, 30%, no support. Temperature-wise, I did 200 degrees PLA and 60 degrees on the bed. For cooling, I left the first layer uncooled, and then after that, 100% on the fan. 50, degree, or 50 millimeters per second for the speed, and this was ready to slice. Sliced it, it looked good, and I sent it off to the printer, and this is what I got. It looked pretty good. This was on the Flash Force Dreamer and it came out decent. And the switch, the switch actually fit nicely except for the top. The notch at the top just didn't fit my switch. He must have had a smaller switch. So I'm going to have to take away material. So I think what I'll do is I'll bring this into Tinkercad and just take away material up in the corner here. So I'm using the new beta version of Tinkercad, which I'm still getting used to. I imported the file and then I brought the work plane down to that surface inside the box. And then I brought a whole box, this is one that will take away material, into that area and shrunk the box down until I got it to about the size I wanted for where I'm going to take material away. Now I didn't really want to take all the material away, I still wanted to keep that curve somewhat in there. So I decided to just take the one side of the curve and notch it out all the way to the edge of the box. So I positioned this thing so it would take out that chunk. And it's nice, you can see through the, the whole box here and see what I'm going to take away. And then I just lined everything up so it looked decent. And then once I had that in place, I could just group these guys together and take away the material. And there it is. My computer's a little slow. So there's the notch out, and hopefully that'll fit this switch. So now I needed to print this guy. So I did export.stl and sent that to the printer. And here's the result. You can see them side by side. This one has the notch I took out, and this is the original. So let's get rid of the original. Now let's try the switch again and see if this thing fits better. The side to side uh, fit nicely and it popped in and it looked like I took out enough material. But it looked like it was squishing the switch too much, like it wasn't releasing the switch. I got out my ohm meter and this is the way the switch should work. When it's pressed with filament it's open and when it's released, no filament, it closes and should buzz the buzzer. And you can see when I put filament in here, it doesn't change. So it's not getting high enough. It's never releasing the switch. It's always like it's pressed. Mm -hmm. So I need to take away material here or just make this thing taller. And that's what I decided to do. So I brought it into Simplify 3D. And rather than you know rework this whole thing, I just unchecked uniform scaling and I made the Y direction a little bigger. I went from 35 to 40 for both pieces. I got to do it for both the cover and the box. But this was an easy way to do it. And then once I had those the way I wanted, now I could just slice them with the same settings as I used before and send it off to the printer. And here's the third one compared to the other two. You can see it's taller, it's more gap here at the top. So now let's try the switch. And I put the switch in and I've got the opposite problem. It's never pushing the switch down far enough. And it's because there's a gap, the, the 
mount stretched as well. Once I pushed the switch up, then it started working. So I need to add material down here where it was pushing the switch up. So back to Tinkercad I went. Now I had to make these guys bigger because remember I did that in Simplify 3D. So I brought in a ruler and I just made both of them 40 millimeters tall. I didn't do the 0.78. I just did 40 millimeters tall. So I stretched them just like before, which would stretch that same location I got to fix. And then I could bring in a block and I brought the work plane into that same surface where the extra material will sit and just kind of slid it into where I wanted it. I know I wanted this thing like one millimeter tall is what I measured. And that's what I'm going to do with this block. It's two millimeters wide, and then I'll adjust it here to one millimeter thick. And then I got to bring the top down so it's level with the rest of the block. So I'm just, just putting material in there. Pretty simple, pretty crude way to fix this. And then I duplicated that block, held the shift key, and slid it over to the other side. And then just positioned that one so it was in line with the edge of the block. And that was done. So the one other thing I wanted to do is I know this flange on the cover was hitting on my switch. It didn't hit on his, but it hit on mine. So I put a work plane where I wanted to start and then brought in a hole block and then just positioned it over that tab and then grouped them together and just took that tab right out. I don't need it. The bottom piece holds it and then the side piece on the other side holds it in place. Then I exported these printed those on the FlashForge Dreamer and here's the result. You can see this is the fourth generation and it's got the extra material so let's slide these other three out. Switch popped in nicely and the positioning is perfect. It's working. So now I need to test to make sure the cover is fitting good once I made those changes and the ribs and the edges of the 3D print make this a nice friction fit. It wasn't easy to take apart. I mean it, it slid apart but I had to pry it a little bit to get get it to come so worked out pretty good. I got out my solder, my soldering iron and some 22 gauge wire and then soldered to the proper pins on the switch. Now this is the normally open position which means when the switch is pressed the connection is open so the buzzer won't go off but when the switch is released then it closes and that's what sounds the buzzer that you're out of filament. Then I got some shrink tubing to put over the connections and shrunk those down with my hot air gun and now I was ready to assemble it to the case. So I slid the wires through the bottom hole, which was in the design, bent the wires in so the switch would fit into its slot and it fit nice and tight. And then the cover went on top of that. Now let me show you the schematic for putting this whole thing together. Here's the pieces. I've got a 4.5 volt battery source, which is three double A's, a six volt buzzer, and then our switch. And this is a normally closed position with the arm sitting in the upward position. And then when it's pressed, it comes down to this other pin, and that's the normally open position. So I connect the positive to the switch, the negative of the battery over to the buzzer, and then the buzzer to the other side of the switch. And that's the red wire on the buzzer. The black wire is the ground, and then negative on the battery side. So how this works is when the filament pushes down on this thing, then it pushes this down to the normally open position and the circuit is broken, the buzzer isn't going to go off. But when that filament is gone, the switch pops up, it closes the circuit here, and then the buzzer goes off. And that's how it works, pretty simple. And now the fun part, where you actually get to test it. So I hooked up the battery pack to the switch and then to the buzzer, and when I pulled the filament out, it worked. And it's pretty loud, I'm definitely going to hear this. So I'm pleased with the way it worked, so now I wanted to try it on an actual printer. So I just crudely mounted it to the maker front with some double-sided tape and the buzzer at the top, some double-sided tape and the battery pack in the back. And then I cut it and then let it run to see how this thing would work. And I'm hoping now it's nothing shifted or something went wrong. But I was pleasantly surprised. The buzzer went off just before the filament came out and it worked perfectly. An audible sensor like this is very handy. But what you really want is your printer to pause so you can replace the filament and finish your print. Well, that's possible. The latest version of the Marlin software or Marlin firmware actually has that built in. And there's other options. There's a sensor I got from a guy on eBay and he sent me code for the maker front. So I'm going to try this out as well. So I will try these out and I'll let you know what I think in a future Filament Friday.
So that's it for this week. If you want to check out some of my other videos, please click on the videos over here. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month is all I ask to the Patreon logo. And please subscribe, clicking on my logo over here. That's it. I'll see you next week on Film of Friday.